Um, you know, one thing that is very popular right now with the Christian fascists, a.k.a. Republicans, is their overwhelming enthusiasm for banning things, ideas, books, authors, history. And that concept of banning is just rolling across the country. You know, I've referenced my daughter at university a couple of times. And and the reason for it is because she's in a learning environment now. And it's at a school that is not going to bow to any of this horse shit. And, and there are hundreds, if not thousands of schools just like that, especially when you get into uh, secondary education, when you get into university level, college level. There are colleges that collapse under the weight, the pressure of the right wing. But there are also schools that raise the middle finger and say, no way in hell that we're going to go along with this uh, anti-history attitude or this wave of banning things that's rolling across the country. And I, br- <clears throat> I bring that up because when I see these articles uh, in various publications or online, you know, I'll send a link to uh, to Molly. And surprise, surprise, in a couple of instances, she'll text back and say, Dad, I've already read that. Forty-four states have proposed bans on the teaching of what these Christian fascists call divisive or divisive concepts. And 18 states have passed bans on teaching what these right-wing politicians say are divisive concepts. A, a, A good example is this Stop Woke Act in Florida by the fascist governor of Florida that bans the teaching of eight categories of concepts, eight, including concepts that suggest, quote, a person by virtue of his or her race, color, sex, or national origin bears personal responsibility for and must feel guilt, anguish, or other forms of psychological distress because of actions in which the person played no part committed in the past by other members of the same race, color, national origin, or sex. That's what the Stop Woke Act is trying to and succeeding in jamming into the school curricula. There is not a course out there and and I say this with complete confidence, that would try to teach little white children or little heterosexual children that because they're white or because they're heterosexual, they are criminals. They have done something horrible. This is what the Christian fascists use as their selling point. Do you want your child to feel this horrible guilt? Your little darling didn't do anything, which has nothing to do with the teaching of history. Nothing whatsoever. And somebody brought up uh, this point. If we can teach our children about, say, the Civil War, why can't we teach them about the oppression of Africans that led to the Civil War? Africans who were dragged to this country. I say African because they weren't African-American. They were African and enslaved These laws are already taking effect. And you can, you, you, you can be aware of this. You can see the, the, these effects if, if you stay abreast of this issue in the newspaper. Administrators and teachers have been forced out of their positions. They've been fired on the suspicion that they violated these laws classroom, little little libraries. Did you have one when you were a kid in, in elementary school or secondary school, uh, junior high or high? We did. I did. Molly did. My other kids did. Yeah, little library. Hey, look at the books. All those books now in Florida must be removed until they can be approved by a somebody appointed by this fascist governor 
Ron DeSantis. So that little trickle of this kind of shit is rapidly becoming a flood. And you know what? what is uh, not good? It's very ungood. As a matter of fact, it's double plus ungood about these kinds of situations is that so many of these decisions are made in school board meetings. How many parents can attend a school board meeting? I'm not talking about the loud mouth, bigoted sons of bitches who stand there and scream and screech at a school board about how their little Billy is being told that because he's white, he's a criminal. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about average working class people. How many people can take the time off to go to a 6 p.m. meeting when they got to be home? I don't care if it's mom or dad. They have to be home to fix dinner, to get the kids uh, bathed and, and ready for the next school day. So they don't show up. Who shows up? These right wing neo fascist bitches and bastards who come from these communities, who are Trump supporters, who are MAGA cretins. And start screaming about, well, you're teaching my little Billy that, that the Negroes, uh, been suppressed by him. You know how it goes. And then last month, Florida's Board of Education banned, banned the AP African American Studies on the grounds that AP advanced placement, college courses that, The courses included concepts forbidden by Ron DeSantis and his law, including critical race theory that's never been taught, to my knowledge, in any secondary school in this country, and intersectionality. You know, the, 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 the concept of how race and class and gender and enslavement and all of these things intersect to produce a system that is, by definition, racist, sexist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, intersectionality. Ah. <sighs> Plus books that are being banned by primarily black authors like ta Coates. Oh, my God. Kimberly Crenshaw. Angela Davis. So the college board chose to remove those authors and what they wrote about from the college board curriculum, claiming that it did so independently of Florida's pressure. To which, if I may say, bullshit. And the college board, I'm not a big fan of the college board to begin with. I really am not. Who gave them the power to set up these tests and charge us parents Fairly substantial amounts for our kids to take them. What about the kids whose parents can't afford to take them? And all has to do with college placement or college entrance. But that's a different topic, right? Now, the laws that have been set up to deny history, and I'm talking right now about the ones in Florida, they're being presented uh, by a lot of people uh, on the left as well as the right, as a culture war. That's bullshit. It is not a culture war. A culture war can be defined as a conflict of values between different groups. And as Jason Stanley pointed out at The Guardian, quote, in a diverse pluralistic democracy... One should expect frequent conflicts, yet laws criminalizing the speech of educators are no such thing. Unlike a culture war, the GOP's recent turn has no place in a democracy. To understand why, consider the consequences. And then this writer, Jason Stanley, goes on to explain that these laws 
the, the, the targets of these laws include what I mentioned, structural racism, intersectionality, critical race theory, anti-Semitism, bigotry of all sorts. And those subjects should not be targeted. They should be thoroughly examined. Structural racism is the view that certain persisting structural and practi- practices have resulted in unjust racial outcomes. For example, and, and, and tell me if this is not true, the American racial wealth gap where black Americans have on average 10% of the wealth of white Americans. Why is that? Why shouldn't that be discussed? Why shouldn't that be examined? Why shouldn't that be corrected? After discussion and examination. In a celebrated case, or it was an essay really for the Atlantic, Latina Hasey Coates, who's by the way one of the band authors, he investigated banking and mortgage practices of redlining and lending that left black Americans for generations unable to acquire wealth that comes with buying a house, buying a home and then watching the value appreciate. Property values in a normal situation do not go down. There may be spikes up and down in the economy, and there may be neighborhoods left to to rot. But for the most part, when you buy a house, you're making an investment that is going to only appreciate. And then intersectionality. That's the concept that certain groups are at the intersection of multiple oppression. For example, black women face discrimination not just for their race, but also for their gender. And that this kind of discrimination against, say, black women develops into its own form of bigotry and prejudice against black women. And critical race theory, that's the study of these concepts, the ways practices in various domains, say in housing, in schooling, in banking, and in the criminal justice system, and when a cop stops you, that these different domains entrench persistent racial disparities and inequalities, even when there's no individual racist intent. You know, I think about myself as an example, and and I've talked about this on the air. How almost every single thing I did as an adult, as a white male adult, until I woke, contributed to the continuation of systemic racism in this country. Yeah, just me, just little old me, one of 350 million people. But I wasn't aware of it. And then I became aware of it. And then I start by changing my thinking, my concepts, my definition of reality, fairness, equal justice. And this is what critical race theory can teach. And this is why the Christian fascists don't want any part of it. It has nothing to do with feeling collective guilt It has to do with changing a system that has benefited white people far, far beyond what it ever benefited, and it never did, people of color. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.